106. That's right. Going deeper, deeper, deeper in God. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Welcome. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. It's day 106 and we are going deeper with God. And I want to thank God because this session today we are going to be talking about personal revival and also talking about how to go deeper with God and when to honor the Lord. It's actually 6.05 in the a.m. on the 14th of November 2021. And I bless the Lord as I bring this broadcast to you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy, what a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord. The word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you. The night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Beloved, we want to also glorify the name of the Lord for allowing us to come again and again to share and proclaim of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's one of the great testimonies that I can say the Lord has helped us to always be in the place that he desires us to be, the place of the Amen, the place where he dwells. It says, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? The question that is asked in the book of Psalm 24, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? So I welcome you, beloved, even as we share in this wonderful communion this morning and i encourage you to be a regular partaker of the communion even in your own personal time so that you can also be able to proclaim the death of our lord jesus christ until he comes it is a command that he gave his disciples the last supper when he was leaving he said do this in remembrance of me do this in remembrance of me hallelujah so we want to honor the lord um this morning and, um, you know, and glorify his name in the mighty name of Jesus. Just share the link um, and then others will be able to get it in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to pray for the elements now and then commence and get straight into the day called today. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Personal revival is what God is going to bring us. We're going to experience personal revival because he is the God of all creation. He's the Amen. He's the faithful God. He's the faithful witness. He's always with us, always answering prayers, always giving us the joy of salvation, always enabling us to be in the place where he desires that we be. Let's pray for the bread and the cup. Father, we thank you for this bread. We thank you for this cup. As we partake of it, we pray thanking you lord as we choose for a personal revival we pray the lord as you read through the six chapters that you put for the six pack of today you will help us to get insight open our eyes open our ears lord minister to each one of us <clears throat> i pray for everyone in the journey of 150 days of psalms i pray that lord you revive them refresh them and enable them to walk in your counsel so we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen, amen and amen. Let's partake of the bread together. Thank you. 
Let's project of the cup together. On the cross. and um, six in the name of Jesus. It says, Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Blessed are they who maintain justice, who constantly do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them that I may enjoy prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation, and join your inheritance in giving praise. Verse 6. We have sinned even as our fathers did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our fathers were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses. And they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea, Yet he saved them for his name's sake, to make his name, to make his mighty, to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the four and from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed them. Psalm 106 verse 11. The waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. They believed their, his promises and sang his praise. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his counsel. In the desert, they gave in to their craving. In the wasteland, they put God to the test. So he gave them what he asked for, what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease upon them. In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron, and who was consecrated to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It buried the company of Abiram. Fire blazed among their followers. A flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb, they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glory for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them who had done great things in Egypt. Miracles in the land of Ham and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them. Had not Joe Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before them to keep his wrath from destroying, destroying, destroying them. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 11 to 14, it says, But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. He said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them out here in the desert? Beloved, this scripture that we are upon, it says that Moses stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying him, to destroying them. Standing in the gap, being able to stand in the breach on behalf of your family, on behalf of your workmates, on behalf of your nation, is a joy that God will bring to us. Verse 24, it says, Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with an uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the desert. Make their descendants fall among the nations and scatter them through the land. Verse 28. They yoked themselves to the Baal of Pera and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They provoked the king, they provoked the Lord to anger by their wicked deeds, and a plague broke out among them with Phineas. But Phineas stood up and intervened, and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations. Exodus chapter 6 verse 5, verse 25. Probably this could be a new 
story for you. But this shows you the beauty and joy of the word of God. That the word of God is everlasting. The word of God is sweet. The word of God is mighty. It says Eliezer, son of Aaron, married one of the daughters of Putiel and she bore him Phineas. They were the heads of the Levite families. This Phineas that was born was actually, you know, the one who drove a spear through an Israelite and a woman who was from the nations. There was a plague in the book of Numbers 25. Numbers 25, verse number 8 is actually where that story is. Is that they were worshipping the Baal of Pure. Then the Israelite brought a family to his family, a Midianite woman, right before Moses and the whole assembly. This was in Numbers chapter 25, verse 6. And when he did this, while they were weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting, but Phineas decided, ah uh ah, -uh, this one cannot happen before the nation of Israel and us that are calling on God. He went and followed the Israelite into his tent and drove the spear right in through them. Through that Israelite, he drove the spear. This was considered as righteousness because of that action. That plague was stayed. The plague did not continue because Phineas did not allow it to continue. He stopped it right in its tracks because God was merciful enough to give him the boldness and courage to choose to go deeper with him. In that, he was able to cause the Lord's anger to turn away. In Psalm 106 verse 31, it's written, This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations to come. Verse 32, By the waters of Meribah, they angered the Lord, and trouble came to Moses because of them. They rebelled against the Spirit of the Lord, and rash words came from Moses' lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them. But they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by the blood. They defiled themselves by what they did. By their deeds they prostituted themselves. Verse 40. Therefore the Lord was angry with his people, and abode his inheritance. He handed them over to the nations, and their foes ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion, and they wasted away in their sin. Verse 44. But he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. He caused them to be pitied by all who held them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This marks the end of book 4 of Psalms. We commence the final stretch tomorrow when we are reading Psalm 107. Beloved of the Lord, God's dealings with Israel have been, uh, have been put to us in the book of Psalms 106. Showed us that God's unrelenting love is mighty and powerful. That the foes are foes and I come to declare that your foes will be covered in the mighty waters. In the mighty name of Jesus. That the Lord will cause your foes to be covered in the mighty waters. It says in verse 11, The waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. They believed his promises and sang his praise. Many at the times when we choose even to get into a personal revival, is that confession of sin is the first thing that is necessary. 
Confession of sin. We must come to the place of confessing our sins with God. In order for a revival to happen, it is necessary for fellowship with God and revival among God's people. The word confess has the root word meaning to say the same as confession. Then is agreeing with God about your sin. Confession is that say the same as. So the moment you are saying you are confessing, you are saying the same as. I bring a big testimony about obedience yesterday after sharing about obeying the voice of God. Um, you know, I wanted to do something on the chariot. So I asked for a referral from somebody and uh, I was given a number of a man that was a bit far away from where I was. So I went out to do some work. Uh, I came from the studio and once I left there, I rushed very quickly. I called the person and I said, I'm coming, I'm coming. I said, ah, it's late, but I said, let me go. But my act of obedience resolved to six souls, total strangers, never met them. On the street, they gave their life to Jesus. And that was what God desires of us. As they confessed with their mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believed in their heart, God raised him from the dead. Then they began to experience salvation. The same way confession of sin is necessary for fellowship with God and revival among God's people. Confession of sin will help you to go deeper with God. Constantly asking God to forgive you. Constantly asking God to give you that capacity to walk with Him. Beloved, walking with Jesus is not a religious matter. You must make a decision to be a born again Christian. That's the only way you can be able to have a personal revival and go deeper with God. Beloved of the Lord, Psalm 139 verse 23 to 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test my thoughts. Point out anything in me that makes you sad and lead me along the path of a lasting life. Confession of sin will take us deeper with God. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 8, Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs 8. Going deeper with God. Going deeper, making a conscious decision to go deeper with God. To go deeper. Be intentional about it. It's very intentional. It's extremely intentional. There is no way it can just be, you know, that it comes over you. Say, I receive, I receive. No. You don't receive going deeper with God. You make a choice. You desire to know Him more. You desire, you decide, you decide, you, you say now, Lord, I will know you more. I will read your word more. I will pray more. I will lead others to you more. I will fast more. I will give more. I will do more. Because when I choose to go deeper with God, it's a supernatural blessing that God is going to release to enable me to walk with Him. <laughs> So Proverbs 8 verse 1 Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise our voice? On the heights along the way Where the paths meet She takes her stand Besides the gates Leading into the city At the entrances she cries out To you, O men, I call out I raise my voice to all mankind You who are simple Gain prudence You who are foolish Gain understanding Listen, for I have worthy things to say. I open my mouth to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true, for my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are faultless to those who have knowledge. Verse 10. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Beloved, verse 13 describes 
the capacity and the character of the human heart. The character and even ability of a human heart is arrogant, number one. It's proud, number two. It has evil behavior, number three. It is perverse speech. These four things are in the heart of man. Without Jesus, without the Lord, man is desperate. Man's heart is desperately wicked. You need to come to the place of knowing that wisdom is calling. And one of the things that wisdom does not like, wisdom does not like arrogance. Wisdom does not like pride. Searching yourself for pride will be one of the ways that you know that you are with God in the journey of going deeper with Him. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You need to be able to be sure to name your sin before God. For example, you make a prayer like, Lord, I have not put you first in my plans. Or, Lord, I have neglected your word and prayer. Do not make even one excuse for sin of any kind in your life. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, He or she who conceals his sin does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. You may want to pray as you go deeper that God will help you so that when you are finished confessing of your sins, you can, you know, you can be able to glorify the Lord. We need to embrace the promise of Psalm 103 verse 12. That says, as far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions from us. Hallelujah, Sister Jeanette. Been wondering where you are. I would have actually come to knock on your door. <laughs> but you are a bit far. But not far in the spirit. You see, you step into your personal revival today. You know, for you to get deeper with God. You need to ask God these things, you know. You know, to the brave depths. You know, you need to use questions to, to brave the depths of your heart. Knowing that as you do, your heart is safe and secure in, the heart, in God's hands. God himself says to us in Psalm Proverbs 8.13, he says, I hate, he says, I wisdom dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Those four are our character as humans. We carry pride. We carry arrogance. We carry evil behavior. We carry perverse speech. Naturally, even a small baby will be naturally proud. Naturally. Even without you trying to do anything, the baby is already carrying sin in them. When we choose to go and step into a personal revival today, we need to ask some questions to ourselves which will help us. One, is there anyone Against whom you hold a grudge? One question you need to answer. Aren't, is, are, are, are anyone you have not forgiven? Anyone you hate? Anyone you don't love? Hmm? Are there misunderstandings that you are unwilling to forget? Is there any person whom you are harboring bitterness, resentment or jealousy? Anyone you dislike or he, to hear praised or spoken of, including politicians. I've seen people, one of the politicians was saying the other day, when I see the other politician show up, I switch off my television. For you to get that personal revival, you need to ask this question to yourself. Are there misunderstandings you are unwilling to forgive? Is there anyone you dislike to hear praised or spoken well of? Need to ask her this question. Do you allow anything to justify a wrong attitude toward another? Personal revival requires you to come to Proverbs chapter 8 verse 12 
and be in that place where he says, Good to see you, my brother, precious. He says, I wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have understanding and power. By me, kings reign and rulers make laws that are just. By me, princes govern and all the nobles who rule on earth. I love those who love me and those who seek me find me. With me are riches and honor. Enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, bestowing wealth on those who love me and making their treasuries full. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was appointed from eternity, from the beginning, before the world began. When there were no oceans, I was given birth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills I was given birth, before he made the earth or its fields or any dust of the world, I was there when he set the high heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was the craftsman at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instructions and be wise. Don't ignore it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorways. For whoever finds me, finds life, and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me, who harms himself, all who hate me, love death. Beloved, the Lord has given us five wonderful books of songs and wisdom. Proverbs. Psalms, Ecclesiastes, Job, and the wonderful book of Song of Songs have been given to us by the Lord. And there is this word that says, Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. We need to be that man, waiting daily at the doors of wisdom. Waiting daily at the walls, at the doors of wisdom. Ecclesiastes. We are going to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 in the mighty name of Jesus. A personal revival is imminent. Your life cannot be the same when you are this close with the word of God on a daily basis. You cannot be the same. You cannot remain the same. And like I mentioned to you, is an experience that is shaping us on the inside. Is working on us. God is working on us. God is working in us. He's faithful. He answers prayer. He knows our settings. He knows our environment. He knows what we're going through. One of the things that he has assured us is that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And going deeper with God, we plan and God directs. Going deeper with God, we step into a personal, personal revival. That you yourself, before you walk into any other revival, you need to be revived. Asking those questions that I've just given you are questions that will help you to know. If at all you are holding grudges with anybody, there is no way you can be able to experience the supernatural. There's no way you'll be able to experience victory with God. Have you failed to reach out to the lost for Christ? Have you failed to witness consistently with your mouth for the Lord Jesus Christ? Has your life not been a witness to the lost? Mark 16 verse 15. Mark 16 verse 15. Mark. It says this. Let me read it in the New King James Version I have here. 
Mark 16:15, it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is not a reserve of some people. It is for us all. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You need to be bold, my dear sisters, my dear brother. You need to be bold, very bold. And the boldness comes from the Holy Spirit. That's the one who empowers us and gives us boldness and capacity. Yesterday was my first time to go into a place like that in the night season. It was actually around 7 p.m. And the place was right in the middle of the city. You know, very different from the places where I go witnessing, where people are in different settings. These were, were people in their, in their element of the evening. John 13, 35 says this, By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. A personal revival must have love. Are you secretly pleased over the misfortunes of another? Are you secretly annoyed over the accomplishments or advancements of another? Are you guilty of any contention or strife? Do you quarrel, argue, or engage in heated discussions? Are you a partaker in any division that creates enmity between people? Are the people whom you deliberately treat as are there people whom you deliberately treat as unimportant? The sad aspect is going to missions with people who consider other people unimportant. Say, leave this one alone, he's drunk. Somebody said to me once. I moved out of where I was and I went to the drunk person. I ignored all these other people. I went to that particular person, I was told, this one is disturbing us, let him go. I went to him, I said, brothers, you don't understand. This man is here for a very noble purpose. And I went to him and put my hands around him. And the man was broken by that love. Are you deliberately treating people as important, as unimportant? If a homeless man walked into the church, how would you be able to behave? How would you behave? Would you start hiding your past and starting to wonder? Or would you say, oh, welcome, brother. Come, come, come into the house of the Lord. How would you do it? Die by love. You'll be able to show the love of Christ. I thank God because I've been able to travel and the places I've gone, sometimes the people in the land have regarded the police officers as bad people. They don't even say hello to a policeman. Because when they see a policeman, they say, if I greet the policeman, they will say I'm an informer and they come for me at night. Ah, what is the problem? They are human beings. They are brothers and sisters. And by this we will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, if you love one another, you by this you will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Acts 20 verse 25 is another question for your personal revival. And I want to bring to you, oh my God, help me. There's so much to share and enough time in the name of Jesus. So it says in Acts 20 35, it says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, it is more blessed, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20 verse 35. Have you robbed God by withholding his due of your time, talents, and treasure? The triple T. Have you robbed God by withholding his due of your time, talents, and treasure? Those three T's are very key. Time, talent, and treasure. Have you robbed God of those? Have you failed to support kingdom work either by service, prayer, or giving? Very important question to ask yourself. 
are you dependable? Are you undependable? So that you cannot be trusted with responsibilities in the Lord's work. Are you allowing your emotions to be stirred for the things of God, but doing nothing about it? This is a big question. <laughs> your emotions are stirred. You go for a prayer conference. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You shake, you shake. You leave that place. You go home. You do nothing. You don't even share the gospel with your neighbor. You listen to a hot sermon online. You listen and say, Amen, Amen, Amen. You read the statement, you say, Amen, Amen. Your emotions are stirred up for things of God, but you are doing nothing about it. It's the reason why you need a personal revival. A personal revival. That you must come to the place of getting revived personally. Very, very personal. It is not a group event. Neither is it a conference call. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2. I will read it. And this is something that is so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. We are stewards of our time, of our talents, of our treasure. We are stewards. So are you dependable as a steward to be trusted with responsibilities in the Lord's work? <clears throat> Listen, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, is something also that we need to know. For personal revival, we must be able to know these things. You know, in verse 19, it says this. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord's. Are you careless in any way with your body? Do you fail to care for it as the temple of the Holy Spirit? Are you guilty of excess in eating or drinking? Do you have habits that defile your body? Then know that these are questions you must answer for you to get a personal, a personal, a personal revival. And go deeper with God. Go very deeper with God. Answering these questions will help you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 it says this, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that may they may be saved. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Do you take great credit for anything good about yourself. Do you take credit? Do you take all the credit? Do you love the credit? You know? Do you love just taking the credit? For anything good about yourself rather than give glory to God? Do you talk of what you have done rather than what Christ has done? Do your statements begin mostly with I? Hey, Lord have mercy. We are many of us in this. Are your feelings easily hurt? Have you made a pretense that of being something that you are not? Personal revival. Personal revival. Way to going deeper with God. Going deeper with God. Are you self-conscious rather than Christ-conscious? Do you allow feelings of inferiority to keep you from serving God in new ways? Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, give us personal revival. Lord, help us to walk in your ways. Lord, help us to walk in your ways. Lord, help us to walk in your ways. Ecclesiastes 7. 
A good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of death is better than the day of birth. It is better to go to a house of mourning than to a house of feasting. For death, for death and destiny, for death is the destiny of every man. The living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, because a sad face is good for the heart. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. It is better to heed a wise person's rebuke than to listen to the song of fools. Like the crackling of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of fools. This too is meaningless. Verse 7. Extortion turns a wise man into a fool, and a bribe corrupts the heart. Verse 8. The end of a matter is better than its beginning, and patience is better than pride. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. 10. Do not say, why were the old days better than this? For it is not wise to ask such questions. Verse 11. Wisdom, like an inheritance, is a good thing, and benefits those who see the sun. Wisdom is a shelter, as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this, that wisdom preserves the life of its possessor. 13. Consider what God has done, who can straighten what he has made crooked. When times are good, be happy. When times are bad, consider, God has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, a man can dis cannot discover anything about his future. In the meaningless day life of mine, I have seen both of these. A righteous man perishing in his righteousness, and a wicked man living long in his wickedness. Do not be over-righteous, neither be over-wise. Why destroy yourself? Don't be over-wicked, and don't be a fool. Why die before your time? It is good to grasp the one and not let go of the other. The man who fears God will avoid all extremes. Verse 19. Wisdom makes one wise man more powerful than ten rulers in a city. There is not a righteous man on earth who does what is right and never sins. Verse 21. Do not pay attention to every word people say. Or you may hear your servant cursing you. For you know that many times in your heart you have cursed others. All this, verse 23, I tested by wisdom and said, I am determined to be wise. But this was beyond me. Verse 24. Whatever wisdom may be, it is far off and most profound. Who can discover it? Verse 25. So I turned my mind to understand, to investigate and search out wisdom and the scheme of things, and to understand the stupidity of wickedness and the madness of folly. Verse 26. This is the very key verse that I want to share with you, brothers, because this verse will prevent you from being in the hands of the wicked woman. It says, I find more bitter than death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap, and whose hands are chains. The man who pleases God will escape her, but the sinner she will ensnare. Look, says the teacher, this is what I have discovered. Adding one thing to another to discover the scheme of things while I was searching but not finding. I found one upright man among a thousand, but not one upright woman among them all. This only have I found. God made man upright, but men have gone in search of many wicked schemes. Verse number 29. Beloved, what a joy as we head out to the, to the wonderful, wonderful word, in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, the story of Cain and Abel, the story of the first sibling rivalry story in the scriptures. Adam lay with his wife Eve and became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of God, I brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Verse 2 says, now Abel kept kept flocks and Cain worked the slow the soil in the course of time Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord but Abel 
brought fat portions for some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. So the Lord already gave a warning to, to Abel, to Cain, in verse 7. Verse 8, it says, Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you walk the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out of the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Verse number 17. Cain lay with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain was then building a city, and he named it after his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, who was the father of Mehujael, and Mehujael was the father of Methuselah. Methusael was the father of Lamech. Lamech married two women, one named Ada and the other Zillah. Ada gave birth to, to Jebal, he was the father of those who live in tents and raise livestock. His brother's name was Jabal, Jubal. He was the father of all who play the harp and the flute. Zila also say, had a son, Tubal Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tubal Cain's sister was Nama. Lamak, Lamek said to his wives, Ada and Zila, Listen to me, wives of Lamech, hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for injuring me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech seventy-seven times. Verse 25. Adam laid with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth, saying, God has granted me another son, child in the place of Abel. Since Cain killed him, Seth also had a son, and he named him Enosh. At that time, men began to call on the name of the Lord. Revelation 
is where we are in. This is one one wonderful uh, session that God has allowed us that we are reading Genesis and Revelation at the same time. So we go to Revelation chapter number 2. It says to the angel in the church in Ephesus, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven star in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and found them false. You have preserved and have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Welcome, Sister Anna. Good to see you. But if, but you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. You know, the Nicolaitans, the Nicolaitans, you need to know, understand this, what is the practice of the Nicolaitans? The practice of the Nicolaitans. What is this practice that the Lord is saying, you also hate the practice of the Nicolaitans? The symbolic reference According to this view, that the teaching of the Nicolaitans refers to dominating the people. It's compared to teaching of Balaam, which he refers to seducing people. So John uh, discusses the nomination of the church within the church, you know, the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans. Who are they? Because God says that you also hate the practice of the Nicolaitans. That we can be able to enjoy our own personal revival with God by being like this church. It says that, uh, you, it says that, but you have this in your favor. You had the practice of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is the paradise of God. To the angel, of the church in Smyrna, right? These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and they are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. And you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even to the point of death. And I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. Revelation 2 verse 12. To the angel of the church in Pergamum write, These are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. You remain true to me, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold on to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols, by committing sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who have told to, who hold on to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore. Otherwise, I will come to you and you will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Verse 18, the church of Thyatira. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, 
whose eyes are the blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you're now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and eating food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. Verse 23. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches their hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Verse 24. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to our teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. Only hold on to what, I, what you have until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my father. I will also give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Beloved of the Lord, going deeper with God, going deeper with God is intentional. It must be intentional. The personal revival must happen from a personal front. You must desire to grow deeper, to go deeper with God. You must enjoy going deeper, you know. You must stay away from unedifying radio programs and TV programs. You must rid yourself and your eyes of things that are degrading in your spirit. You must find satisfaction only in the Lord. You may find satisfaction only in the Lord. Must find satisfaction in the Lord. Constantly finding it in the Lord. Finding satisfaction in Him. Because He is the Amen, the firstborn from the dead. He is the creator and the ruler of all the kings of the earth. He rules. He's a faithful witness. He's a first one from the dead. I choose to go deeper with him. I choose to know him more. I choose to tell others about him. I choose to allow him to baptize me more with his Holy Spirit. Welcome, my brother Lemuel Solomon Gashegu. God bless you. Hallelujah. What a joy to be able to connect. Beloved, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. This is important for me to share with you, especially some questions like I was mentioning to Al, uh, earlier, those questions that you must ask yourself if at all you are going deeper with God. It says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And verse 32, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So the question for your personal revival, one, do you complain? Two, do you find fault? Three, do you have a critical attitude toward any person or thing? Three, are you irritable or cranky? Do you carry hidden anger? <laughs> I've met people who told me, if at all I was not a Christian, you would have seen what I would have done to that one. <laughs> that is called hidden anger. You are carrying it. Even though you are saying now you are saved, you... Uh -uh. It's called hidden anger. The Lord is saying... Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be far from you. I'm telling you, beloved of the Lord, these are very simple things, but we find it so difficult to achieve them. God wants us to go deeper with Him. So even my mouth, 
is at is a verse is, is an avenue of blessings and not curse. Mm -mm. I will not carry hidden anger. I pray if you want to go deeper with God, do you become an impatient with others? Very important. Say so I'm tired. I was sharing with one of my friends who went to a hotel and uh, they wanted to have their breakfast and uh, they said, please, don't serve me the omelette before you bring me the tea. So they said, okay, they brought the omelette first. So after some time, she's like, so where is the tea? And got very impatient. So... There were two sisters, so one of them was narrating to the other one, and I happened to be their photographer, I was just listening to that. So I said to them, you see, God was testing your patience. You see, the fruit of the Spirit in the book of Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit, it must be displayed out of your life. You must be taken through that situation. You must go through it. <laughs> yeah. Seeking satisfaction from questionable sources. That TV program that you love so much, that you can even fight somebody, if at all they try to get the remote from you at that time, will stop you from going deeper with God. Doing certain things that show you are not satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ will stop you from going deeper with the Lord. Do you complain? Are you ever harsh? Even to your children, are you harsh to them? Are you screaming at your children and being harsh to them? No, you will not. That is a question. You see, God's ways are so simple. Let me tell you something else. Be patient with people. You can never change a human being. Never ever. Never even try. Stop. You can't make it. Even if you take the man, prisons have tried to change people. They don't. It's the grace of God. A prison cannot change a prisoner. Let me tell you, it cannot. You will take a prisoner, you put him inside jail for so many years, and unless the grace of God touches that man, he will come out and go and steal tomorrow, and he's from prison. What causes this? The nature of man. The heart is desperately wicked. Beloved, as we have come, to hear these words, I pray that you take up the cross daily and follow Jesus. You follow Jesus intentionally. It's intentional, beloved. You cannot just wake up and you find that you have grown spiritually. Growing spiritually is intentional. We were sharing with my brother, another brother we were sharing. And he said, you know, God always speaks to us. And it's good to always obey. Because unless, you, if you did not obey the call to start the 150 days of, of Psalms challenge, you would not be, yani God would not have brought us this far. And now we are going on towards book 5. Book 4 is ended. Psalm 106 is the last book of book 4. The Lord has helped us. Chapter by chapter, verse by verse, like that, like that, like that, like that. We are on day 107 tomorrow. By the grace of God, the mission Monday must continue. And if I don't teach you these things about how you can be a part of this blessing, is I will, be, um, I will not be helping you to grow spiritually. Galatians chapter 6 verse 6, it says, Share all good things with your instructors. The moment you are watching what is happening, like, you know, a spectator, you don't become a partaker. You need to be, a, you know, the things how we give towards God is not just money. There is even service. There is even prayer. There is even checking on, physically checking on the person. Checking on the person in the mission field. Checking on them. How are you? How can we pray? How are things going? Just that alone. You wait. Nowadays, I don't post on Facebook. I don't. And it's not justified for me to always give all the information out on Facebook so that you can support the work of the Lord. No. 
The Lord has a system and it works. I've tested and I've tried and I know that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, in April, when the enemy tried to snatch me out of this journey, the Lord said, no, you're not going nowhere. And that's when some of you started to give. They gave because they saw of a medical reason to give towards Malcolm David. But when he's doing the mission, uh -uh, let me just watch from the side. But he's about to die of COVID-19. Let me give. Maybe this is my last chance. <laughs> God will not kill his purpose. His purpose must prevail. I'm telling you, beloved. The purpose of God must prevail. And if you have chosen to go deeper with him, you must take up all that is within you that you called the cares of this life and throw them beside you. Philippians 1, chapter, verse 21. Let me read this one as the Lord helps us. We have already finished reading the six pack and it's a joy just to be able to continue as the Lord has given us enough time in the name of Jesus Christ. It is 7.10 in the a.m. when we are broadcasting this in Nairobi, Kenya. And I bless the Lord I'll be going to the scripture garden for Mission Monday. And um, I intend to do some things there and um, I need you to keep me in prayer a lot. I need you to keep me in prayer. I need you to stand with me in every way that the Lord may lead you to do. And that will be a joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Philippians. 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 Where is the book of Philippians? <laughs> New believers, when they get the Bible for the first time and they go to church, they are in trouble because they don't know where to get the books. Listen to me if you are a new believer. All the books of the Bible are found here. There's a page. It's called the Table of Contents. It's initially at the start of the Bible. That's where you get all the table of contents and it can lead you to where the books are. So don't feel stranded in the Bible not knowing where to open. Just go to the table of contents. And it's even easier now with the digital Bible. You can just go to the digital Bible. So Philippians 1.21, it says this. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. It says again, the prudent seek danger and take refuge. But the simple keep going and suffer for it. There is no point where I will be able to be afraid of the terror of night. Because I understand, using prudence, I can tell this matter is going to be like this, like that. So for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So in that position, I can go deeper with God, even the more. For he promises us. Did you know that some of the things we struggle with are just a matter of obeying what God is saying? God may be speaking to you every time, do this thing, do this thing, do this thing. But then you are saying, how will they think about me? How will they, how will I, how will... When the moment you start questioning like that, you realize that you have been taken up with the cares of this life. Are you taken up with the cares of this life? The second thing, is your joy found more in things than in the Lord and his word? Does anything mean more to you than living for and pleasing Christ? Yani, is there something, you know, maybe your job or your, your, your marriage or your children. Is there something that means more to you than living for and pleasing Christ? These are questions you need to answer. And if you find the reason, choose to come back to the Lord and ask him for you to go deeper with him. Ask him, Lord, forgive me. I've not been reading the word I shall, as I should. It's intentional, beloved. It's very, very intentional. It's intentional, beloved of the Lord. We have to be intentional about the word. We must pray. <laughs> we must believe God. Philippians 2.14. Listen to this. It says, Do all things without complaining 
and disputing. Have you neglected to please God in all things? Another question you need to ask, ask yourself. But before that, do you ever, by word or deed, seek to hurt someone? Do you gossip? Do you speak unkindly concerning people when they are not present? Do you carry prejudice against Christians because they are of some different group than yours? Because they do not see exactly as you do? Then, if you do, do all things without complaining and disputing. This is a word. Personal revival. It must come forth from us. Philippians 4 verse 4. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, have you neglected to seek to please God in all things? Have you neglected that? When it says rejoice in the Lord always, have you neglected to seek God, to please God in all things? Have you neglected to, please, to seek to please God in all things? Do you carry bitterness toward God? Have you been dissatisfied with His provision for you? Hey! This is one of the areas that the Lord helps us a lot. And when we come to this knowledge of rejoicing the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Never be dissatisfied with His provision for you. Pastor in the desert, never be dissatisfied because God has already provided good health and everything else you need. And you love everything that you need when you need it. Is there an unwillingness? To, 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 you know, uh, to obey God fully. Do you find yourself unwilling to obey God fully? Do you have any reservations as what you would or would not do concerning anything that might be His will? Do you have any reservations? You say like, I was telling somebody, I, I traveled to Masabit right after there was some danger there and people had been shot and there was tension in the town. The whole day the city was deserted. Nobody was in Masabit. But that's the day that I was traveling to Masabit. The person said to me, ah, if it was me, I would not have gone. I said, oh, I know by God's grace you would have gone. Because it's not me who, does, who says these things. It's the will of God. The purposes of God. He enables us to do this will. And for those who are already on the ground in that place called, called Masabit, which is a place where a brother will rise up and say to the brother, let's go to the field. And then in the field, kill the brother. Just like Cain and Abel. The blood has opened. The ground has opened and received the blood. Then the land that was number two in agriculture in Kenya, nowadays it's a desolate land. No plants, no, no, no plants to, grow, to, to farm. It's completely desolate. Now listen to me, my brothers and sisters in Marsabit. The word of God says, if my people called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. If the solution shall not come from anybody else. The solution shall come from us, the people in the land, humbling ourselves and praying. And God will come through in the name of Jesus. Capedo in Baragoy. The same problem. I don't understand how 100, you know, over a thousand cows are just rustled and they are walking in a valley and the government cannot touch them. A cow is a very big thing. You don't just hide a cow. You can't put a cow in a bag. You can't. A cow has to walk or it has to be put in a truck. So these challenges that are in the land here in the land of Unam Kenya. There is the same problem up in West Africa where we have the herding communities. They still have the same problems we see happening in Kenya. We see the same problems in Somalia. We see the same problems in Libya. We see the same, same problems in Central Republic Congo. We see the same problems happening inside the desert of the Kalahari. All these problems are the same. They seek to turn blood into the ground. The earth open, receive blood, death locks its resources. They continue being in the desert. 
my people let us go deeper with god let us go deeper with god let us ask god to help us if you are looking for a deeply satisfying relationship with god i encourage you to pray and ask the holy spirit to fill you if you are a believer in jesus christ God has given you his Holy Spirit to help you live according to his perfect plan. Why not pray and have faith and invite him to fill you with the Holy Spirit? Before we pray this prayer for the believers, I want to read Romans 10 verse 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Beloved, confess this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you have confessed with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart God raised him from the dead. You are now born again. You are a child of God. Now I want us, the rest of us to pray this prayer as we go deeper with God. Personal revival begins today. Going deeper with God go starts today. If you are looking for a deeply satisfying relationship with God, I encourage you to center your life on Jesus every day and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Beloved, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. The personal revival will cause you to be more patient with people. The personal revival will cause you to know that people are just that. People. Don't expect much from them. Even Judas having stayed with Jesus for three and a half years, still sold him for 30 pieces of silver. We don't expect much from humans. Human beings, and I'm talking about myself, talking about myself, I'm talking about this human. Do not depend on this human. This human does not depend on itself. I choose purpose personally to ask God to help me. I empty myself of myself that the Lord may fill me again fill me again fill me again fill me as I share with you more the testimony from yesterday I went all the way to a shop of a young man called Dennis he was wondering why I'm coming at that late hour because the need that I had for the chariot was not an urgent one but I needed to go there to his shop because in the day I'd been given his number. I did not know that his shop was strategically positioned in a place called Langata. So I went, he welcomed me, I parked my chariot very, very well in front of his shop. And then after that, we started having a chat. He looked at my matter, he said, ah, we cannot do this now, we'll have to do this tomorrow. Or another day when there is light. Then I started telling him, I know there's a reason why I've come here and it's not about this chariot. There must be another reason. I shared with him about the Lord, Jesus Christ. And while we were sharing, his friend came over. His friend came over. How did his friend come over? The mobile phone that I usually use fell and broke in the, I think a day ago. So now I can't see anything on that mobile phone so i had to remove the sim card from it so that i can put it in the one that now i'm speaking to you so he calls his friend and says please come his friend comes because he always has that pin for removing the sim card so when he gives me the pin and you know i remove the sim card and i change and i put both sim cards in the same while he's handing me over i said you can stay. I was just sharing the gospel with him. And Zechariah stays. We started to share about the love of God. I shared in his dialect. I shared in his dialect. Because now I can download all the Bibles in the world on my phone. All of them. There is no Bible I don't have that has been on the uh, Play Store. Or the App Store for you guys who are on, app, on Apple. Beloved of the Lord, as I shared with them, 
this young man, they said, yes, it is time for us to give our lives to Jesus. They were the ones who were agreeing with me. I did not convince them. My going all the way to Langata, I had never thought of going to Langata, but I know that Langata is a fortified city spiritually. I know it's not an easy land. I know that Langata has a lot of principalities governing into debauchery, sexual immorality, drunkenness, murder, drugs, all those things. They are found there. Even the graveyard of the city is found in Langata. People go to do detestable practices. And the Lord led me there. The Lord led me to Langata. As I was there, we finished praying with these two. And then, here comes a man. I was not wearing a warm uh, t-shirt, so I was just having a, a plain top because I just ran out as the Lord helped me to go. So, this man comes and he's selling some beautiful sweaters. And I say, let me have a look. So, we start looking and as I begin looking, you know, it's normal. That's what happens around places where there's a garage, there's someone carrying some stuff and he's selling so this man, I start telling him about the Lord. And he's very interested. He starts listening to me. Then moments later, another lady walks in who also sells coffee down the road. And she's just getting on to work and it's about seven. And she starts saying about how her husband was sick and it's God who helped her. God helped her. I asked her, are you born again? She said, no, I'm not, but I fear God. I said, that's why I am here today. That's why I have arrived here in this spot we have met. Then she's like, yes, she started listening. Then another one is passing. She said, please come, please come, let's listen to the gospel. The lady calls. Three of them are listening to me. While we are speaking, the two have already been saved. One has gone back to his work. While we are still speaking, a vehicle stops by and he goes into that vehicle because probably that's his customer and they were going to do something. Now I'm left with three new souls. In a place I did not plan to go. I'm in Langata. Outside Naivas, if you know where Naivas is. So I start sharing with them the gospel. I tell them about the love of Jesus. I tell them about my journeys around. And I tell them how I found myself there. But then I invite them to know the Lord. In that stage, in that place as I still talk, I buy myself this wonderful sweater from this man, Julius. And as we are still talking, everybody passing there... We'll just see ordinary conversation going on. It looks like what goes on in that city. No one was aware that destinies were changing in the name of Jesus. In a short while, three of them gave their life to Christ. That was a total of five. Just before I was leaving, the man who works together with the one I had gone to see was standing at the shop there, next to the shop. When I was just about to get into the chariot, I didn't even preach to him. I said, um, I was praying with these ones here. Would you like to give your life to Christ? The person said, yes, 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 yes. I want, I want. What happened? The first two people that got saved, I prayed for them, raised an altar in front of three liquor stores. That's, that's what obedience to God will do. Three liquor stores were there. I did not even think about the liquor stores. I did not think about the people in the liquor stores. I did not feel like I need to tell them because at that time they are in darkness. When the Lord is opening my eyes to see the things I'm seeing, oh my God, I'm seeing that woman whose hands are chains and whose heart is a snare and men who are in the wrath of God are falling trapped into that hand. Ecclesiastes 7.26 you go to those places, liquor stores and all this, you will see that woman there. You will see that man there. The scripture. Beloved, as these six souls came to the Lord, I asked myself, Lord, if I had not gone, what would have happened to these six souls? In Langata, the Lord came and swooped six souls right in the middle of an activity in the evening. By 8 I was leaving. And I was just looking at how it has developed. If you go to Langata now, you not even recognize it. There are huge apartments. Close to 300, 600 families in those apartments. The place is totally different. If you go there now from the way it was before. And it's still changing. Beloved, 
Let us go deeper with God. Souls are going to be added in big numbers. I need your support. I need your prayers. I need your dollars. I need your shillings. I need your, I need your encouragement. Because we are doing it together. Don't be a spectating Christian. Tell me also of the people you've led to Christ. Let us pray for them. It's not, it's, it's a personal matter, my sister Jeanette. Those doctors that see you, those people around you, do they know the Lord? Share with them. Solomon, those people in your circle there, are you just looking at them and say, ah, this one is a Buddhist, this one is a Muslim, this one is what? God does not look at it like that. He wants you to make a difference. So pray with me, say, dear Father, I need you. I acknowledge that I have sinned against you by directing my own life. I thank you, you have forgiven my sins through your son's death, Jesus Christ. I now invite you, Christ, again to take your place in the throne of my life Fill me with your Holy Spirit as you commanded me to be filled. And as you promised in your word that you would do if I asked in faith. I pray this in the name of Jesus as an expression of faith. Thank you for directing my life and filling me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen and Amen. Shalom, beloved. That marks the end of book four. We shall commence book five of Psalms, which starts 107 all the way to 150. Do drop me in the comments something that you'd like me to, um, something that you'd like to hear uh, the Lord say to you or something you'd like uh you know, the favor of God to be bestowed upon us together that we may be able to hear his goodness in the land of the living. Drop me in the comments. Let's be able to share together and uh, see the goodness of God. Let us be filled more with the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for your encouragement. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, Jeanette Navarez, for always sharing the videos. Shalom, 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 shalom. I love you all. Baraka.